What do you get when you take a young Aussie vet and move him from the beaches of sunny Queensland to the Royal Borough of Richmond on London's historic River Thames? Hello. Hi, guys. The British people love animals. Hey, you miss mummy. For me, they're kindred spirits. Caring for creatures great and small, there's never a dull moment for Dr. Scott Miller. That is far too forward, I'm afraid. Yeah. And grateful owners certainly know who to turn to in their hour of need. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Scott cares, and I don't think you can fake that. And normally, as a vet, you know, you can have a... A sort of a lie. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> a tough northerner and supposed to be a tough Australian. And look what dogs do to him. This big-hearted boy from Oz is making his mark in one of the biggest cities in the world. He's going down the pole. Going down the pole with his mates. <laughs> I doff my cap to the doctor. Ah, that's a bit too much time here, mate. On this episode of Vet on the Hill, a young family fear for their Labradoodle. Oh dear. Herb is part of the family. We couldn't be without him. This three-year-old British bulldog is grumpy. <laughs> it's an overwhelming feeling of dread. <laughs> but he has a very good reason. X-rays. It's like a young man, but with joints of a granddad. Why have you brought me a snake? The practice's new vet gets an exotic baptism of fire. I had no idea that a snake could fart. She demands love pretty much 24-7, so it's certainly a very hands-on relationship. And a love story between a man and his cat. Does your wife at all feel jealous in this situation? <laughs> she understands Sadie kind of came before the, the marriage. The St. Margaret's Clinic is open, and a family of blondes are first in the door. Mum Melanie and her children Florence and Oscar. Good boy, well done. Their Labradoodle Herb has recently developed some worrying symptoms. Herb is shaking his head, rubbing his head in the dirt, and he's generally not been himself. Herb, look, Florence has made you a card. What's it say? Dear Herbie, I hope you get well soon. From Florence, kiss, kiss, kiss. Oh. Well, Florence and Oscar are worried about you, baby. Herb is absolutely part of the family. We couldn't be without him. If anyone asks us who's in the family, we, uh, we mention Herb first, probably. <laughs> he comes first in everything. Getting lots of hugs. Hello, Undergo. team. How are you Hello. going? Hi, Hi. Herb. You guys are like looking at my kids, eh? Like blonde people everywhere, including the dog. Hello, yeah. mate. <laughs> Herb's had a few problems over the years, which means that he's a little less keen on visiting the vet practice compared to when he was a puppy. And today is one of those days. <laughs> Come on, Come on it's not going to be too bad. Come on, Come on, on. <laughs> good lad. Come on, then. Come Let's on. go. Come on, big guy. Come, Come on. on, it's not going to be too bad. Good boy. Good boy. Good good boy. Lads. Well done. Good lads. There we go. There you go. We never want to find anything serious when it comes to a family pet, and that dog is very well loved. So I'm really hoping that we won't find anything too serious today. Good boy, Herb. Good boy, good boy, good boy, good boy, good boy, good boy. As soon as I look down the scope, there's something very dangerous and very nasty down there, and uh, I'm quite worried about Herb. Oh, dear. What a beautiful animal, aren't you? So handsome. I love you to bits. I really, really love you to bits. Nearby, one of Scott's favourite patients, three-year-old Archie, is having a morning cuddle before his appointment at the Richmond practice. Do you love me? Hey, do you love me as well? Do you? That's 74-year-old Peggy rescued the British Bulldog several months ago after a friend guilted her into it. She said she had a 
bulldog that needed a good home. And I said, no. And then she said, but it's been in the rescue centre for 10 weeks now and it really it needs a good home and you could look after it. So having buttered me up, I said yes. Give us a kiss, go on. No, a proper one. Thank you. That was lovely. <laughs> when I first saw Archie, I thought, that is a big dog. That is big. And he leapt up at me and scratched my hand and drew blood. And I thought, well, this is some kind of relationship here, isn't it? You know. I like to be treated rough. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. You're my baby, aren't you? But as much as Peggy adored Archie, there were problems. Would you like a massage, sir? Firstly, the bulldog wasn't house trained. He then started emptying his bladder in various places over the house, especially my bed, which I wasn't happy about. And I thought of changing his name to Niagara. How's that foot? Is it working today? Is it? But within a few weeks, Peggy realised Archie was battling a far more serious issue. He didn't want to walk. I took him to the park and all he wanted to do was to get back in the car. He wasn't interested in walking. I thought that was very strange. Oh, he's really bad. Archie is now on medication, but lately the pain appears to be getting a lot worse. I did feel really sorry for him. He was coping, but I know that they're stoic dogs and that they'll cope with things that other dogs can't cope with. Today, the bulldog is on his way to see Scott for x-rays. I knew I'd taken on something that I might not be able to um, cope with. Let's go and say hello to the vet. Come on then, baby. At St Margaret's, the news is not good for family favourite Herb. Mm, yes, it's understandably sore, mate, because he has got a nasty grass seed in there. Uh, it's really, really far down the canal. Uh, I must admit, I'm a little concerned about his eardrum based on where it is, because it is so far down his ear that it could be perforating or rupturing his eardrum. Mm, you poor love. Grass seeds are really nasty little things. Basically, they're in the shape of an arrowhead and every time a dog moves, it'll burrow further and further and further into the dog and you're unable to pull them backwards because it flares and it's just such a painful process for them to go through. So to see one in a very delicate position teetered on the edge of an eardrum of a dog is serious. It's not a simple ear infection, I'm afraid. So we have to give him something to make him sleepy and we'll get that pesky ear sorted out. And then once he's woken up, we'll give you a call and we'll talk it all through. All right, all right. lovely. Thank you very much. Oh, oh thank you. Good boy. Take me away. Yes. <laughs> I couldn't ever imagine life without her. He loves his teddy, don't you? Come on, then. Say bye-bye. I'm going to say bye-bye to Herb. Yeah, give him a big hug. That grass seed is lodged right at the base of the canal. It can go right into the middle ear. It can affect his balance. It can affect his nervous system. So there are some very serious ramifications. Come here, sit. Good girl. High five. Very good. Sit. Down. In Twickenham, Scott's new vet, Jo, is chilling out with her dog, Kimber, before she heads into the St. Margaret's practice. I've always wanted to be a vet since I was really young. I can't think of a time when there was more than a week that I wanted to do anything else but be a vet. I get you, folks. Oh, Jimmy. The animal lover only graduated from university two years ago and is enjoying her new position with Scott and his team. 
It is a fun place to work. Lots of jokes and, you know, everybody's very empathetic and cares a lot about what they do as well. You tired now, eh? I'm very lucky that I can bring my dog to work, but I did actually mention it in my job interview. That was a deal breaker. If Kimmy couldn't come to work, then I might not have taken the job. Right, Kimmy's off to work. Bye, Bella. Bye, Jasper. Hey. Right, let's go see your mouse now, Kimmy. Hi, Herb. Hey. Hello. So this is Herb. Great name. <laughs> it's a brilliant name. With Teddy and cards in hand, so we need to make sure they're uh, okay. ready to go. Interesting. Okay. At St Margaret's, Scott and head vet nurse Emma are about to try to remove a grass seed lodged dangerously deep in Herb's ear canal. He's going down. I am worried that Herb's eardrum is perforated. Grass seeds can go right into the middle ear. It can affect his balance. It can affect his nervous system. So there are some very serious ramifications to a grass seed that goes past the eardrum. It's really bad. It's very, very deeply embedded. I'm almost certain that this is going to have been down through his eardrum. Oh, bless him. Really bad. It's very, very deeply embedded. I'm almost certain that this is going to have been down through his eardrum. Oh, bless him. At the St. Margaret's practice, Scott is attempting to remove a grass seed buried deep in Herb's ear. That is nasty. Oh, that's huge. Can you think of that trying to burrow into your head? Oh. The grass seed we removed from Herb's ear is a nasty one. Very, very sharp. It's got the feathered edges, so it was only going in one direction, and that's going right through Herb's ear and then into his middle ear. That is exceptionally painful and cause a huge amount of damage. Want to show Mum? Okay. I think Herb would have been in a huge amount of pain. Surprising that he's really not showing those clinical signs. He's a very calm, easygoing fella, but I tell you what, if I had an ear uh, that was full of grass seeds, I'd be screaming my head off. Let's have a little look Let's at his eardrum ear now. Looks like. mm. There's a lot of blood and damage down there and infection, but unfortunately I, I can see a bit of a hole. These grass seeds are very damaging to animals, and when they burrow into that level, they can cause all sorts of neurological dysfunctions. I think in this case, we've caught it just in time because if it was any longer, it could have been a lot worse. Oh, there's one. There he is. Oh, he was starting to work his way in. Scott and Emma are now searching for any other grass seeds that may be camouflaged in Herb's golden fur. Oh, there's another one. Oh, and here as well. Add it to the pile. Grass seeds aren't as simple as just a prickle in the foot. They can be a real disaster. They actually can harpoon any organ that they find on their way through a dog's body. And they'll only really stop when there's bone. They can cause real problems. They're so sharp and so spiky. Nasty little things, aren't they? We get to nine in total. Poor old Herb. He was focusing on his sore ear, but in fact, all the while, he had feet absolutely riddled with grass seeds. And yeah, no wonder he wasn't himself. Oh, Poor guy. No. Braver than I would have been. With all the grass seeds removed, Herb will spend the afternoon sleeping off the sedation. Oh, he's going to want his teddy to wake up with. Of course he is. I there would. Go, mate. The damage that we've found in Herb's eardrum is significant, but I do hope it'll heal up and eventually he can get back to his water-loving ways. Good lad. Good morning, the Vettis Margaret. Yes, of course, what's the surname? While Herb's recovering downstairs, um, Nathan's about to surprise the new vet, Joe, with an exotic patient. So a friend of mine has gone away and left me with these snakes. He's fairly new to the hobby, and I'm not sure he's got it quite right. Hey, Joe, I've got something special for you. What's in the bag? Well, I've been looking after some snakes for a friend. Snakes? 
Nathan, it's my first week. Why have you brought me a snake? When I first put the pillowcases down, I saw Jo look like she wanted to kill me, but really, she should treat them. She's a vet. Fortunately for the apprehensive Jo, only one of the snakes needs medical attention. So this one's Margaret, oh. as in snake in St. Margaret's. Oh, me, Margaret. I think she's just had a shed. Okay. But I don't think it's quite gone as well as it should have. Nathan is worried that Margaret is having trouble breathing and has developed a nasty discharge around her mouth. Well, it looks quite bad around the front, doesn't it? It's quite a bit of discharge. Let me see that. If that was a poodle walking through the door, I'd be at ease and confident. But this is really new to me. So I can see she's got quite a bit of froth in the corner of her mouth. Has she been open mouth breathing? Yeah, making sort of like a gargling noise. She really does look like she's in a bit of trouble. Remember, snakes only have one lung. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think back, and I can't think of any snake specific lecture. Oh, it is crackly. So I probably spent about half an hour on snakes, and it wasn't on snake respiratory tract disease either. Treating this python is way out of Joe's comfort zone. She's relying on Nathan, who's the practice's reptile expert, and has owned snakes for 15 years. So a lot of people get snakes thinking it's cool, unusual, which it is, but they don't always get everything right. Do you know how they're kept? Well, ventilation, temperature? I just don't think there's enough ventilation in the boxes for them. I think this is one of the big problems now. I think a lot of people are buying them, but the equipment's so expensive to start out with yeah. that they try and do it on a budget. I think the most likely thing is probably bacterial, but of course we don't know if she's got an underlying disease. I think we give her the antibiotics for a week and then see if she's still showing clinical signs, we might do a swab and check for the other diseases they can get. But I think she needs some antibiotics now. I like to feel like I know what I'm doing. Despite how many years we spent at university, we still often have to go back to a textbook or the formula and look up what we're gonna do. It's time for some quick research, but Jo is still suspicious that her boss may have had something to do with this challenging patient. So I thought maybe Scott had put them up to this. Scott would be capable of that. I imagine him putting me through a test on my first week, for sure. So Jess, what do we have on this afternoon? Oh, we've got Archie in today. Archie. He's a good boy, isn't he? At the Richmond practice, Vet nurse Ryan is teasing his colleague Jess about their next patient. Have you got him out of the car before? No, I haven't. I think it'll be good for your training. OK, we'll yeah. see how that goes then. <laughs> it's definitely your turn. OK. <laughs> Outside, Peggy and the infamous Archie are just pulling up. To make it easier for the bulky bulldog to get in and out of the car, Peggy removed the front passenger seat. Archie laid claim to the car. I think he must have lived in a car. It must have been his kennel, if you like, because he made it his own. Come on. And he didn't like other people, especially men, trying to get him out of the car. Hey, Archie. Hey! Oh. Just, it's an overwhelming feeling of dread. <laughs> there's, there's a serious risk of losing an arm. Come on. Yeah. I think we need to stop. Definitely. Yes. Okay. So Jess and I looked at each other and we said, do you know what? We admit defeat. It's time for Scott. Neither of us are that brave. Um, it's his practice, it's his arm. It's come up. No. <laughs> Excuse me. Bad behaviour is not tolerated. Come on. Right. There we go. That was a bit naughty, wasn't it? Come on in, you old grump. Here we go. Come on. I first met Peggy and Archie in the clinic and straight away I thought, this is an odd couple. Gee, he's walking like go. an old man in a young dog's body. Archie's a handful. 
There's no doubt about that. And it's not just the physical problems that he's got going on, but also the behavioural, the mental ones. But Peggy just wants to do the best for Archie, and I salute her for that. She's an absolute star. You're extra grumpy. It just shows you're extra sore, doesn't it, you poor boy? Have you given an objection to a snake? Yeah, I've given a few. Well, that's more than me. I haven't done one yet. Margaret, the royal python, has been diagnosed with severe respiratory problems. This is Joe's first reptile patient in her short veterinary career. Poor Margaret. Look at all those bubbles. It must be really difficult for her to breathe. I know that I want to give her a type of antibiotic, but I need to know which one and I need to know the dose. But while Joe's doing her sums, Margaret decides to put on a show. Oh, look at all of that. Wowie. Wow. <laughs> oh, I bet she loves that. Snake shedding is always a beautiful thing. It's like a new beginning, new skin. What's not to like? Wow, that skin underneath looks so much better, doesn't it? That's beautiful. With Margaret's strip show complete, it's finally time for her antibiotic injection. So I want to go around here where it's most sort of fat and muscly. Oh dear. That looked a bit painful, hey? You can kind of tell by the way she's moving that she's a bit stressed about it. It's the last bit. Okay. That, that's great. Just rub that in. All done, Margaret. Hey, that'll kick in soon. You'll feel much better. This is like the snake practical that I never had. Gosh, look at all that. She will feel better without that in her face. Ugh. When Nathan was cleaning that discharge from around her face, I couldn't believe how much was coming out. It was all under her lip. And she just looked like a new snake when we got rid of that. Do we go tail first? Yeah, let's put in the tail and just get her settled in a little bit. And finally, Margaret's reward, a nice warm bath. It sounds weird, but I, I had no idea that a snake could fart. Oh, she has passed something at the bottom. Yep, nice bit of snake poo there. Reptiles have this thing that every time they get in water, they get really relaxed. And you often might find a few bit of whoopsies in there. So glad all that shed's come off now. She looks so much better. It's like a different snake, Margaret. Margaret's going to go home with a course of antibiotics, and I've recommended more baths for her to have. And I'm hoping that in a couple of weeks, that'll clear up the respiratory tract infection, and she can live a happy little snake life. Thanks a lot for that, Joe. OK. Well, thanks for teaching me how to give an IM to a snake. And now I am the new snake vet. I'm ready for my next snake case. <laughs> A little feel of those elbows. Wow, they're feeling very, very thickened and actually quite swollen at the moment. Good boy. Back at Richmond, Scott's trying to find out why three-year-old Archie is walking like a geriatric. So what I'm feeling here, Peggy, is just a sort of feeling almost of nuts and bolts under the skin. Mm. It's those little bits of bone that are rolling about in that mm. joint. I always think of him as almost like a, a bodybuilder. You know where they go, ooh, ooh, and they sort of yeah. they, they pump up. Yes, um, yes. And he's sort of doing that at the front. Yes. Um, and by doing so, he's sort of top-loading the front part of his body, and I think that's just wearing him out quicker than he should be. For a three-year-old, I would never expect arthritis. Archie, yep. That's it. Good boy. Well done. X-rays should give Scott the answers. Go. Good lad. Good lad. Oh, it's times like this I wish we invested in an elevator. Hi, <laughs> big boy. Come on, it's like Good carrying boy. a fairy rhino. I absolutely love Archie. He is like having a bromance with a dog. He's this big, burly, blokey dog. You got your fingers and toes out the way? Yeah, all out the way. All the important okay. appendages out the way. Good boy. These are terrible elbows. It's a tragic story if we do find that he does have arthritis. 
X-rays. Oh. Oh. He's chilled out a little bit now, hey? You relaxed? I'm certainly warming to him more now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's, he's a good boy. He's a champ. <laughs> he's just misunderstood, but he's grumpy for a very good reason, yeah. aren't you? Because you're just sore. At the Richmond Clinic, Scott and Ryan are waiting for Archie's X-ray results. After nearly taking Ryan's hand off earlier, there's been a truce between vet nurse and bulldog. It was great to see Ryan finally be able to see the good side of Archie, the happy side, the non-bitey side. I forgive you. I do. Whenever he's not in that car, he always acts beautifully, and he's a perfect gentleman for me. All right, Peggy, I've got your boy. Can't stop, he's heavy. You follow me in. There we go. In you come. Worried owner Peggy is about to find out just how much trouble her Archie is in. This is his elbow joint here. Mm -hmm. And what you can see is you can see these white bits of fluff. That's arthritic change. That's what's causing the problem. We've got new bone, we've got bone breaking down, building up all at the same time. And that's that nuts and bolts that I can hear and what I can feel yeah. when, I, when I flex and extend his elbow. The x-rays are concerning. Archie's just three years old, which works out to about 21 human years. It's like a young man, but with joints of a granddad. There's no drug that exists that's going to fix that. What we need to do is something quite brave, which is to go for arthroscopy. What arthroscopy is, is basically placing instruments into the joint to actually clean all those changes out of the joint. Mm -hmm. And I've got, luckily enough, a very, very good mate who is very good at arthroscopy, and I know that he's gonna take very good care of you and Archie. I think it's wonderful, I really do. It gives him another chance, and um, a chance to get back on his feet, literally. Wonderful. I didn't think there was an operation. I thought this was how it was going to be, and it would only get worse, so it was like another door opening, actually. I was absolutely delighted. Later that day at St Margaret's, Joe's dog, Kimber, has taken over reception. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Is this the new receptionist? Yeah. It's a special welcome for Melanie, Florence and Oscar. <laughs> if only. Yeah, shame. She's a rubbish typist. Absolutely rubbish, <laughs> aren't you? Yeah. They're all anxious to find out just what's happened to their herb. When the kids left here, um, they were really anxious. They suddenly went into complete mode of, oh, we want to be with Herb, we want to be with Herb, will he be all right, what will they do to him? How's our Herb? So he's been such a brave boy, but it's uh, a very serious finding that the uh, eardrum on that left side has been perforated, unfortunately. Oh, so he's got a hole in the, the eardrum. So where that grass seed, which is this nasty little thing, look at that, kids, look. Oh my gosh, that's huge. It's oh. gross, isn't it? Oh. Yeah, I imagined a grass seed to be the size of a pinhead, but it was a lot bigger than I thought, and it was spiky on the end, so nasty. Oh. So thankfully it's out. We've flushed his ear canals, but uh, with the hole's a decent size. It might heal, it might not. If we get water down there, that can affect his balance. It can cause infections. Uh, it can even affect his neurological systems. Oh. I don't know how Herb will handle not swimming. He loves swimming in the sea. I mean, he loves the sea. But also, what you guys have got to promise me is that you need to start looking between his toes after every walk. The reason being is that I found not one, not two, but nine grass seeds between his toes. Oh, my Lord. See all of them? Oh, it's horrible. It was pretty horrifying, really. Now, yeah. guys, just so you know, he's just had an anaesthetic, so he might be a little bit woozy, look a little bit drunk, OK? Oh, no. <laughs> it's been on the wine. Drunk man! <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't get that from me, but like, <laughs> I know. it's not from It's me. very authentic. Shh! <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Herb is pretty desperate to get home. We could see he wasn't keen on coming into the practice, but he's very keen to get out. Good boy. That's it. Oh, show me the dog. Where's my herb? Give me my animal. Yeah. Hey, baby. Who's this? Hello. Whoa. Hello. There we go. 
Herb's done so well, Brave Might, and I think even though he's a bit wobbly, <laughs> I think that he's going to be much happier at home, snuggling up with Melanie and the kids, and of course, his cute little soft toy. Where are you going to put the grass seeds? But do you want to keep it for show and tell? Yeah. Yeah? I want to keep it for show and tell. Herb's been really lucky, really lucky this time, so I'm glad we got him into the vet and we've got it all sorted in time, and hopefully he'll be fine now. Thanks right, very take much. Take care, no thank worries. You. See you later. You Bye, Florence Basker. Bye, Herb. And soft toy okay. and card. Lovely. <laughs> Come on then, guys. Off we toddle. Scott, look at you and see what's going to go on. See what's going to go on with the baby. Here we go. Here we go. Next day... Hey, John, how you going? <laughs> Scott's first appointment is American John and his much-loved 17-year-old Sadie. Let's go on through and get her out of this wet weather. Hello, old There girl. we are. Hey, baby. Hello, sweetheart. John absolutely loves his cat and he gives no excuses. And I think it's fantastic. Good girl. There we go. I know, you're so good. Well done. I do find it reassuring in Britain that I'm not looked on as the eccentric cat guy. It's uh, the British madness about their animals is dovetails in greatly, wonderfully with how I feel. Okay, gorgeous. Let's have a little look at you now. Yeah, good girl. 18, you said, didn't you? 18 next month. What sort of uh, events do we think we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna organize for her? Well, certainly her first pint. <laughs> Take the pram into the, uh, the pub, I'm sure they'll love that. Yeah, what kind of reaction do you get when you bring the cat pram into a public space? Well, they normally think it's the, the baby pram um, until they hear the meowing, and then, then we get quite quite the look. Oh, oh hey, 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 who's your friend? Oh, I thought you had a baby. So no, cute. it's a cat. Oh. I see, uh oh. Oh, he doesn't, yeah, he, he's not best friendly to. <laughs> oh, that's okay. All right, see you guys. Bye, Bye now. They're some nice puppies. John and his wife Tracy moved from the United States to the UK two years ago. The pram thing came about when we first moved over. We didn't have a car, and in America you have to have a car for everything. So we didn't we didn't think about how we were going to get Sadie from home to the bed. There you go, hey sweetie. He struts up here, Richmond Hill, with his cat in a pram. He's loud and proud. He's out there. I love my cat, and she loves me. Good on him. Don't take her out too often because she usually thinks she's coming here. Come on now. <laughs> no offense. But today, John is worried about his aging sweetheart. John, I tell you what, she is looking thin, isn't she? Yeah, she's just feeling more and more bony. Yeah, I can feel your ribs. It was only two years ago that Sadie's sibling, Peanut, died from kidney disease. Her brother cat, Peanut, had the same noticeable signs of the, the weight loss. And we noticed with his haunches getting skinnier and, and the back getting ricketier. And so we saw that happening with Sadie and we decided to, to bring her in, see what we have to say about it. Sean, what I can tell you about the weight that we've found today is that she is 2.5 kilograms. She has been up to four kilograms uh, back three years ago. Uh, that's a huge amount of weight for us to lose. So you or I are losing nearly half of our body weight. Uh, so for a cat, uh, it's, it certainly shows that there is definitely some, some problems afoot. We do need to look into this pretty seriously. Meanwhile, Peggy and Archie are on the road to High Wycombe to see specialist orthopaedic surgeon Michael Hamilton. My friend Rod is going to take me to the surgery and he's got a wonderful car, so we'll arrive like royalty and that's what Archie likes. He likes to be a bit royal. This time, the feisty Archie gets out of the car without a fight. Right. Oh, what a little treasure. Here we are. Getting him out of the car was really easy this morning. We had no trouble at all. Oh, what a good boy. No temperament or anything. He just came out easily. OK, so just extension first of all. Ready, one, two, three. Scott's already sent Archie's x-rays, and Michael is now using the hands-on approach. He's interested. And then this little specific test, right, ready? Ready, one, two, three. 
Uh. Hello, hello. Sorry, big man. I'm just going to do that again. Wait, ready? One, two, three. Oh. There we go. Oh, still friends. <laughs> still friends. <laughs> there we go. Oh. I think that's quite conclusive, isn't mm. it? OK. Mm. Well done, you. I got his elbow joint there, and I just kind of rubbed it, and I poked him right on that little spot there. Yes. And that little spot there, that little corner of bone, very commonly, is the bit that just sits a bit proud. So if this is his radius here, and this is the notch of his ulna here like that, that should be a perfect fit. If it's not a perfect fit, and that little corner of bone maybe sits a little bit proud like that, mm -hmm. it can start to rub, mm -hmm. or little bits can start to crack off. And when I poked in there, we got, we got quite a reaction. Yes. And for a, for a bulldog, that's probably that, quite significant. That's, yes, yes. So this is a really, really frustrating disease to treat. There is no magic bullet. The point of today was to see where we are. The plan, I put the camera in, see what we find. Based on what we find, depends on what we do. But we're not gonna be massively aggressive because we don't need him to start kind of, you know, catching the bad guys like the police dogs need to do kind of thing. Mm. We just need to get him out of pain, basically. Mm. Just a bit stressed, that's all. And, uh... Can't wait to get down the pub for a gin and tonic. <laughs> oh, look at that. Flying along. Come on, you. This way. This way. He's a good boy. I'll speak to you soon, Peggy. OK. Take care. Yes. Come on, then. Thank you. Be a good girl. At the Richmond practice, John has just found out that Sadie is losing a dangerous amount of weight. It's been steadily dropping, but it's really dropped this time around, so I really do want to get to grips as to why. And obviously she is not the biggest fan of the vet practice, so we take that into account when we hear a slightly higher heart rate, but her heart rate is pretty fast. Yeah. I think in this instance, she's showing fairly classic signs of a, an old lady, an old yeah. cat. There's a number of different things that this could possibly be. First thing we'll be doing today is taking a blood sample and we'll be looking at not only kidney function, but also her thyroid level as well. And the other thing is just checking her blood pressure because when a cat has got high uh, thyroid level uh, of high thyroid hormone, it does drive up their blood pressure and that we need to to determine now, because in future, if we start to treat it and the blood pressure drops, we might see its effect on kidneys. When we see a relationship as close as John and Sadie, I don't want to be the bringer of bad news. You sweet thing, that's a good girl. I work at home as a computer programmer. I am with her 24 hours a day. And from the time I wake up, she's spent the, the night in bed. I have to carry her on my shoulders to get ready in the morning, put that pot of coffee on come downstairs and then she's in my lap all day. She demands love pretty much 24 seven. So it's certainly a very hands-on relationship, um, but it's one I think that she really enjoys. She really enjoys just having me there all the time. So let me get this right. Oh yeah. You work from home. Yes. With your cat all day. Yes. The cat has a cat pram that you bring to the vet clinic and now I find out that she actually is your bedfellow. Your your, bedfellow, yes. Does your wife at all feel jealous in this situation? <laughs> she just, she, I think she understa understands that uh, Sadie kind of came before the, the marriage, so. Right, and she, and of course the cat can't use your credit card, so I suppose she gets Not her own Not that I know of. <laughs> <laughs> the British love their animals to the point of obsession and I definitely think that John is the poster boy for the uh, American contingent of mad cat people people. All right then John, well I'm going to take you now and we'll start doing the blood pressure and the bloods but I will be looking after your beloved. Come on then, I know, I know, you love your daddy don't you? Of course, she's 18, she isn't going to last forever uh, and today is all about finding out how long she might last for. All right, I'll get as much information as quick as I can for you, okay? okay. See you in a bit. Hello, Archie. Sleepy, sleepy. At the Cherry Tree Practice, specialist orthopaedic surgeon Michael Hamilton is about to begin an arthroscopy to find out why four-year-old Archie walks like an old man. 
So his elbow is a bit like an old person's knee, and if he was an old person, um, the doctors would be talking about things like knee replacement. So this is the actual arthroscope, which is going to illuminate inside the joint. That's then transmitted to this thing, which is a camera, which then gets made into a picture of what we're going to see inside the joint. Owner Peggy is hoping this surgery will improve her Archie's quality of life. I hope that I'll be frolicking, frolicking, <laughs> frolicking through the park soon. Yes, I do. With my dog, of course, not on my own. Camera goes in. My first impression, having just got the camera in, is this does not look very nice at all. All that red stuff there, that's, that's inflammation of his joint capsule. He's got arthritis, he's had it for ages. That there, on the bottom of the screen, is red bone. So as soon as the camera went in, first thing you could see, red bone. What you want to see is white, shiny, articular cartilage. Straight away, red bone is not good news. That is his ulna that I was hoping just to see a little crack in there. That's got no cartilage on it. This dog has got really, really severe cartilage erosion. That means that the less invasive options for him are not on the table anymore. The only options he's got surgically are pretty full-on procedures, cutting bones, plates and screws. Michael's now decided to use a cutting-edge therapy, a platelet-rich plasma injection using Archie's own blood will be injected into his elbow. Success. <laughs> Is that enough? Yeah, that'll be enough. What we've done is we've taken a blood sample from him and we've treated it in such a way that we've collected these little things called platelets, which will release these little anti-inflammatory proteins, and we put those into the joint, into his elbow joint. And that will do nothing for the cartilage, but what it will do is it'll hopefully make the whole joint just less angry, less inflamed, and less painful. Done. And I'm happy a dog, and a happy owner, and a happy vet. It's time to transfer the beefy Archie into a recovery cage. Michael can't resist having a go at his good mate. I don't know what Scott was, was uh, moaning about. He's like as a feather. I could, I could lift him with one arm. I don't know what Scott's banging on about. He's got significant loss of cartilage in his elbow joint. So it's not great news with regard to the cartilage that he's got. So right. it's a, it was a bit of a nasty surprise we got, yeah. rather than a nice yeah. surprise, yeah. OK? Yeah. Now, he doesn't know that, though. No. Don't tell him. No, okay? I won't. I'm not shocked or surprised. I, I thought that there was something pretty serious going on. Here he goes. Here he goes. Archie! Archie, go, baby! Arch. My little baby. <laughs> so he wins a little rosette for being brave. So the plasma injection, that will hopefully make him feel a whole lot better. For how long? How long is a piece of string? Hopefully, lo long term. He's getting the cutting edge treatment. You know, this is kind of what they do in people. So uh, uh, your job, difficult as it might is, try and get him as lean as you can. Yes, I can do that. <laughs> I will definitely Sorry, do that. Sorry, mate. <laughs> if you have to see him again, there'll be less of him good to stuff, see. Good stuff, good stuff. Thank Hello. you very much. All the best. Thank you take much. care, take care Thank of each you. other. See you, Archie. If we can just get him to have his walk in the park with Peggy, that's what it's all about. And I would be optimistic we can get there. And if that needs surgery down the line, fair enough. But for now, all hope's on the plasma. So we'll see how we get on. Look at that. He's walking better already. Hey guys, I've got hey John's hello. mistress here. We oh, need to hello. treat her very, very delicately. Hi, She's lost quite a bit of weight of late, so we're just going to look into yeah. that a bit. Back at Richmond, Scott's about to start investigating why 17-year-old Grand Dame Sadie is losing a dangerous amount of weight. You know, it's funny when I'm consulting with John and Sadie is that you almost feel like you shouldn't be in the room, like you're like, you're like the third wheel. <laughs> you know? There's so much love between the two of them. <laughs> yeah, so I need to make sure that she is uh, passed back to him in, in an equal state. Indeed. Of love and devotion. Dedicated dad John is not going anywhere. He's just hoping Sadie makes it through to her milestone 18th birthday. It's tough seeing what she's going through now. I can't imagine her being gone. I mean, she's been in my life longer than my wife. And if 
a cat of 18, or hopefully 19 or 20 years, when she's gone, it'll, it'll, it'll be devastating. So the first thing we're gonna do is uh, just try this blood pressure out. The conditions in Sadie's case most likely are going to be kidney disease um, in the form of renal failure where the kidneys fail to function as well as they used to. Not too high at 130, that's perfect. Hypothyroidism is the next possibility and that is basically where a cat produces an excessive amount of thyroid hormone. Jeff, good girl. Good girl. Usually because they've got a benign growth that's growing on their thyroid gland in their neck. What a good girl. And that basically drives their metabolic rate very, very fast. So they eat for England and yet lose weight. Sodium potassium ratio is normal. Good, good. Is pretty good. For a 17 year old. So good results to pass back to John. Sadie, so I don't think you're gonna be impressed with the lifestyle changes that I'm gonna implement, but I think it will help you get to that 18th birthday. It's a massive relief today for me to find out that Sadie's health is intact. There we go, here's daddy. Hey baby. There you go. Hey, All right, so she was so, so good, incredibly good. And the news is good. Okay, so, great. Of course, we have to take into account she has lost the amount of weight she's lost. Yeah. So we do need to keep a very close eye on your lady, but <laughs> her kidneys are functioning not too badly. Okay. Uh, and she doesn't have hypothyroidism. So oh, wonderful. So far, good so news. very good. And one thing we are gonna have to do is to just change her lifestyle a little. So what we're gonna do is enact a new type of food that'll okay. just bring down the amount of protein she consumes, just brings down the amount of work the kidneys have to do as well. So with that simple lifestyle change of changing the food that she's eating, I think that Sadie will absolutely breeze through to that 18th birthday. And I don't think though that she can really drink a pint, but John and I are more than happy to enjoy it for her. Okay, thanks, see you soon. See you soon, okay, all the best. Thanks. Bye-bye. Here we go, baby. He is a beautiful boy. Beautiful. Boy. It's been two weeks since Archie received his magic plasma injection. I don't know what this plasma was or what it consists of, but it certainly worked for Archie. He's walking much, much better. It's not a permanent solution, but it's certainly making his life more comfortable. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. Now there's some hope for him. And quite honestly, I've lost hope. I think I'm on my way to getting a new British Bulldog. <laughs> that is very good. Wonderful. Good girl. Happy birthday, Sadie. And Sadie has made it to her big birthday milestone. Is that tasty? John's invited Scott to the celebration. Oh, I felt incredibly privileged to be invited to Sadie's 18th birthday. It's not very often that you get to have a beer with a client, but a beer with a client in a pub with a cat in a pram turning 18. That's special. All right, and I see you've got a nice little birthday card. Do you mind if I open it on her behalf? Oh, please do. Okay, let's have a look at Sadie. There you go, Sadie. Oh. Okay. Look. Do you want to read it? Mm -hmm. It's your birthday today. Happy birthday, Sadie. Thanks for 18 amazing years. Hoping for a few more healthy ones together. Love, Mummy and Daddy. Ah, is that nice? Hey, isn't that lovely? Not so happy, huh? Yeah. I'm not convinced that Sadie was particularly happy with me being at the pub with John, her beloved. Quite frankly, I think she would have ditched the beer and the pub for a lovely snuggle back at home, listening to just the two of us. Cheers. There you go, cheers. Happy 18th birthday. Thank you, hey. happy 18th birthday, Sadie. Good girl. It's been yeah. a good run. Very good.